Aloha, and welcome to season number three, episode one of Live at the Legislature. I'm Carolyn Tanaka, and during the session, every Tuesday, God willing and the windward traffic willing, I will be here sitting down with members of the House of Representatives to talk about issues, priorities, legislation, concerns running through the halls of the state capitol. Tomorrow, the 2020 legislative session gets underway. Legislators have been busy in the off season getting ready for this session and when the gavel goes down tomorrow, they will be ready to hit the ground running. Joining me this morning is Representative Della Albilotti. She is the House Majority Leader and we want to find out, so this session, what can we expect? What are going to be the priorities for us this year? Carolyn, we're going to be tackling big ideas. We're going to be thinking out of the box. Uh, this afternoon, I can't tell you everything, but this afternoon at 2 p.m., uh, we'll have a historic uh, presentation by the House uh, and the Senate majority uh, presenting to you um, a package of uh, incentives, initiatives that really are going to tackle affordability issues and cost of living. Can you, what, what makes can you talk a little bit more about the package? Can you reveal any details? Well, we've been working really hard over the interim. You know, we really took uh, and followed the lead of our legislators who are very interested in cost of living issues. House leadership has visited the communities of every freshman legislator. And when we went out in the community, we really heard issues of cost of living coming up. This was coupled with the business community that was engaging in their change uh, conversations, the Hawaii Executive Collaborative that was looking at big issues and looking at infrastructure issues, health care, affordability, just as we were. Finally, you know, another different thing was we had groups like Bank of Hawaii and Aloha United Way funding really important studies that drilling down on cost of living issues. And one of the things we learned this interim from the Alice report, which focuses on asset limited income constrained employed individuals, uh -huh. we found that people are really struggling. We heard it in the community, but the data backs it up. So what, uh, what are we looking at? What were some of the other factors that played into this group? like the Alice group, who are we talking about here? So, so the Alice group that we're really concerned about are the people who make more, uh, to, they, you know, more, they make more and they cannot qualify for government subsidies. We're really looking at single individuals who make $22,000 annually or a family of four that makes $77,000 annually. It's especially critical because it's these families, it's these for working class families who find Hawaii unaffordable and they are the ones that are leaving. We have had an out-migration of Hawaii residents from the state of Hawaii for three years running. We cannot sustain that. Economically, our, our economists are raising um, the red flags. If we continue to lose our working class populations, we are going to only be a community that's more divided uh, along economic lines. Well, I know that, um, that you all have been working. There's been a flurry of activity here in the legislature over the past month and over the past few, you know, as we head into the session. So. Um, I know that there's quite a lot of excitement about this collaborative historic package. Well, let me hint at a little bit of the things that we're doing. You know, we're going to be looking at affordable housing. The legislature over the past three years has invested cash infusion, has infused millions of dollars into affordable rent rental development. We are going to start to continue that commitment, but also look at the other cost drivers for um, uh, affordable development that are, hi are hindered, that are, are hindrances or obstacles to affordable development. Mm -hmm. So things like infrastructure, we're going to really look at um, tax credits and tax policies to, to, to encourage development and regulatory review and regulatory reform. That's one area. We're going to be looking at, and, and this is again informed by the Alice report that said that the big cost drivers in this state were things like housing and early child care. Mm -hmm. We have with the uh, private community, with the public sector, have really looked at child care issues and we're trying to figure out how we can ensure that there is going to be more accessible child care for more of our young ones. We know that if we get individuals, you know, if we get working families, single working families that have, you know, a little cakey, if they can send their children to quality child care, that means mom or dad can now work and they can focus on their economic resiliency. So we're going to see things in those areas, housing, early child 
care, we're also not going to leave off the table issues of income and, and tax credits and tax relief because we also know from the Alice report that tax burden and income, uh, you know, income constrained individuals, that that's what they're struggling with. Right. It's going to be a broad package. Well, I do know that, um, so 2 o'clock, that package will be unveiled. So for the rest of you, be sure to watch the news tonight because this is going to be, it's an exciting package and we're very proud of it. You're very proud of it. But okay, so let's move on here. What other issues besides that do you think will be popping up this session? So every session, you know, we have chairs that are working hard. We have chairs in the Health and Human Services arena that are looking at vaping. They're looking at mental health and substance abuse treatment. We have um, individuals in, in, again, housing that I, I mentioned. We have, you know, we have um, uh, young Native Hawaiian leaders in, in our caucus that are really championing Hawaiian issues. So I think there's also going to be a conversation about Hawaiian issues. You know, we have Mauna Kea on the table, but that's not the only Native Hawaiian issue that we have to be concerned about. Mm -hmm. We also have great chairs in our uh, energy and CPC arenas. So we're going to continue to see conversations about climate change, uh, as well as, I believe, clean transportation. There's lots to go around. It's not going to be just what we focus on the majority package. We're going to have um, uh, our legislature is really working hard uh, in their committees. Okay, good. Well, um, we kick off tomorrow, and I'm sure you will all be um, watching the news to see what we unveil tonight. Um, is there any other... I have to ask you this because you just cannot do an interview oh, no. without asking the question. Recreational cannabis, do you think that will pop up this year? Well, you know, in the cannabis arena, there really is a lot of things we're talking about. We're talking about CBD, we're talking about industrial hemp, we're talking about medical cannabis. We do have a task force that's looking out at best practices in other states. That's being um, uh, led by our judiciary chairs in the House and the Senate and with involvement from the Attorney General's office. So I think we'll always be looking at cannabis. What we do with it will be something that, we, that will unfold during the session. Okay, great. And you know what? What happens down at the legislature, you never know what's going to happen so we'll see what happens on recreational cannabis thank you for being here with us today i know we um, have a lot on our plate and we will be looking forward to being here every tuesday morning god willing and when we're traffic um, to talk about all of these issues and how they progress through the halls of the state capitol thank you for joining us we will see you next week tuesday aloha doing? We have to go. I'm gonna be late for work. It's Tuesday morning. I gotta record live at the legislature on Alelo. Senate and House leadership discussing what's happening at the state capitol? So just watch it on the news tonight. Come on, let's go. Hey, this is like getting the news before it's news. If only I could get this remote to work. There. Can we go now? No DVR? No problem. Watch Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Channel 49. Your government needs you. The Hawaii State Legislature is encouraging citizens to get informed and involved. With thousands of bills introduced every year, it can be hard to keep up on the issues that matter most to you. Located on the fourth floor of the State Capitol, the public access room is filled with knowledgeable and friendly staff to help you. This is your Hawaii, your State Capitol. Get informed, get involved, and get the government you want. Welcome back to Live at the Legislature. I'm the new Hawaii State Senate Communications Director, Jesse Broder Van Dyke, and this is a very exciting episode of Live at the Legislature because it's the first time we're broadcasting live on all the neighbor islands, on Akaku on Maui, on Ho'ike on Kauai, and on Naleo o Hawaii. And to start our season off, we have the Senate Majority Leader, Jay Kalani English, who represents Maui County, including Hana, East and Upper Ma East and uh, Upcountry Maui, Molokai, Lanai, and Kahu.
Aho Olave. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Good morning. morning Thank, you. Thank you. So tomorrow's the first day of the session, and I understand this afternoon we're planning a big press conference to roll out a new package. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, well, without giving away the whole package, I mean, basically we've been working very closely with the, with the House and with the executive um, on trying to tackle some of the big issues uh, facing Hawaii. For example, uh, homelessness, um, uh, income disparities, and things like that. So this afternoon at 2, we'll be rolling out that package. What's unique about this is that, um, you know, I think one of the rare times we have a general agreement between the House, the Senate, and the executive. So you have the two bodies on the legislative side saying we must tackle these issues, and then the executive saying we'll work closely with you to implement the, uh, the outcomes. The other unique aspect is we've been working very closely with the private sector. So the for-profit businesses as well as the nonprofits in putting this together. Um, I want to stress that this is the beginning point. You know, the the bills will be rolled out, and um, it's it's the beginning of the discussion. The hearing process, and as it goes through, will be the sounding board with the public, and I'm sure the bills will change as it goes through committee. Is there anything in particular we can look towards? I understand housing and education are some of the parts. Yeah, you know, uh, we have invested literally a few hundred million dollars in housing over the last few years. Um, what we're realizing is not just the dollars, but also things like infrastructure, uh, things like availability of land, um, income. You know, people need to have an income to, in order to pay a basic mortgage, basic living. So these issues will be addressed as well. Uh, one of the overarching themes, I think, at least for the Senate, is, uh, of course, climate change, right? I mean, we're, we, we just came out of a series yesterday and the day before and over the weekend of some very bad storms. So I live in Hana, the East Maui, and uh, in a little village called Hamoa. Um, you know, my road was literally about a foot underwater because it's right next to the ocean. Um, my, my ocean side property was three feet underwater almost 90% of the property covered. So, you know, we're in the middle of a imminent, um, we're, we're in the middle of climate change. It's not a future event, it's right now. Take a look around the state, you know, and the most famous road falling into the water recently is in Haula, but on Molokai on the east side of the island, I have a stretch of road that if that falls in, it's about 10 feet left. The whole east side of Molokai is isolated. Um, going to Lahaina, roads falling into the, the ocean, on the big island, on Kauai. So uh, we would like to deal with climate change issues, um, deal with the very hard issue of what they, the nice term is called planned retreat. It really means how do we begin moving critical infrastructure inland and out of, um, out of danger. How, how do we start doing that? Yes, well, you see, so we did all the easy stuff, right? We have the aspirational, um, you know, let's have renewable energy by a certain year, let's do these other things. Now the hard part. Uh, we have the studies, we know the, we, the Climate Change Commission has come out with uh, their predictions of when certain areas will be inundated, like Waikiki, like downtown Honolulu, um, and now the very hard part of how do we move, let's say, a power plant or a wastewater treatment system that's on the coast. Because, you know, uh, I know the numbers have been revised, but we're looking at a window of within 10 to 15 years for a lot of these places to be inundated. That's going to be one of the issues that we look at, at least in the Senate this year. And you just came out with your 2020 Senate legislative yes. program, uh, which includes some of the United Nations sustainability goals. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so you know, the Senate has adopted um, all 17 of the UN uh, sustainable development goals. It's a global effort. So every country in the world, uh, except for South Sudan, because, well, they have some governance issues, but uh, hopefully they'll adopt them soon, um, have adopted these goals. We've localized the goals, and you know, to use a, a big term, we've, we've made them ours. Um, so what we do is we ask each senator to give me their top two 
priorities, issues that they're hearing in their districts. We put that in a grid and then all the senators sit down and we look at that grid and we come up where the clusters are. You know, what are the things that rise to the surface? And then from that, we link them to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The reason you do that is that we can now speak to the rest of the world with the same basis, right? We have all the measurables, outcomes, all the measurements, all the metrics. And then we localize it. So for example, you know, we took eight of this year of the 17 that we'll focus on. Um, and, you know, for example, um, number 10, which is reduced inequalities. We will work diligently to promote social, economic, and political growth, and for, for all by increasing the minimum wage, requiring paid family leave, and creating a retirement savings program. These are very, very local issues that we have been dealing with over the last few years. We've tied them to the Sustainable Development Goals number 10, and um, all of our committees and all of our committee chairs will be working towards this goal. You know, we also took things like um, number three, good health and well-being. We will ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at every age by improving access to quality health care, including mental and behavioral health services, reducing youth vaping and repurposing underutilized state facilities. So again, you know, vaping is a big issue. It's tied to number three and the UN Sustainable Development uh, Goals, which means the rest of the world can understand what we're doing. We're talking about uh, underutilized facilities. We have Leahi and we have other facilities um, that are not fully utilized. And if we fully utilize them, repurpose them, we can get much better outcomes. So we did this with the eight goals that we're concentrating on. We also have some very good partners in this, you know, um, Hawaii Green Growth, the Aloha Plus Challenge. Um, this is a mouthful. Hawaii Green Growth Local 2030 UN Hub. So Hawaii is a United Nations hub for the uh, Oceania, uh, recently designated, and so we're working closely with them. And then our newest partner, the Hawaii Community Foundation, uh, because they have what's called the Change Program, and that's their program based on, again, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. So looking at it, we're dealing with the nonprofit world, the environmental world, and the for-profit world um, to implement these goals for us in Hawaii. Well, it sounds like it's gonna be a very busy session and a uh, lot's gonna get accomplished, and I know you encourage everyone to chime in and uh, let us know as uh, you're developing the final legislation. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, Majority Leader. Uh, we're gonna be back here every Wednesday, uh, every uh, Tuesday morning live at 8.30 and replaying Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. live on Olelo, Akaku, and all the neighbor island and public access stations. get this at hawaiisenatemajority.org. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. doing we have to go i'm gonna be late for work it's tuesday morning i gotta record live at the legislature on alello senate and house leadership discussing what's happening at the state capitol so just watch it on the news tonight come on let's go hey this is like getting the news before it's news if only i could get this remote to work there can we go now no dvr no problem watch wednesday evenings at 7 p.m on channel 49 your government needs you. The Hawaii State Legislature is encouraging citizens to get informed and involved. With thousands of bills introduced every year, it can be hard to keep up on the issues that matter most to you. Located on the fourth floor of the State Capitol, the public access room is filled with knowledgeable and friendly staff to help you. This is your Hawaii, your State Capitol. Get informed, get involved, and get the government you want. Good morning and welcome back to season three of Live at the Legislature. To our neighbor island viewers uh, view with us for the first time, I'm Kael Kealoha Lindsay, your host for the Legislative Minority. Our guest today is Representative Gene Ward. He serves as the House Minority Leader and represents District 17, which encompasses Hawaii Kai and Kalama Valley. 
Rep Ward, welcome, good morning. But I work for all the people of Hawaii, especially you neighbor island people, first time, welcome. I hope you're going to enjoy the program. So Rep Ward, this is your, I think, 20th session. Uh, Has it been that many? Left, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> How does this one feel different than the other ones yeah. that you've been in? Interesting question you ask, because there's always a spirit of the times, like there's a Hawaiian sense of place, there's a spirit of the times. The residuals of 2019, I think, are still clouds and not ghosts necessarily, but look, we're at an all-time low in terms of public approval. The people have a 27% approval rating of what we do here at the legislature. That's one out of four people say, hey, you guys are doing a good job. I mean, and there's reason for cynicism. I mean, not to be just because of the Korean missile difficulty that Colin Moore of the UH says, you know, from there people lost confidence in the ability of government to solve problems. But then came the Keoloha trial, OHA's audit, the rail got letters of inquiry. Uh, there's a lot of, people are getting mugged on the streets. There's a crisis in, in crime in our neighborhood. People are not sure that what we say we can do, i.e., instead of over-promising, we should over-deliver. And oftentimes we've over-delivered on these first sessions like today, and then under-promised, uh, under-delivered at the end of the session. So people are gonna watch us. They're gonna hold our feet to the fire. I know social media is probably flaming a bit of this, but it's where, uh, you know, a lot of the laws we have in the book, we're not even enforcing. So there's a bit of a cynicism. And I take that as part of our job to be held accountable. But when only one in four people think we're doing a good job, I think we better deliver this session. So fighting for the people of Hawaii is very important to improve their lives. There's a lot of people hurting out there and we've got to improve their lives. So how do you and the minority plan to address that lack of public confidence in government leaders? For example, uh, one of the things we've got to do is to improve the health of the people of Hawaii. Uh, we've got the poisonous clouds coming out of uh, cars and schools, and we've got to get a handle on this vaping situation. There's really a difficulty in terms of the health of our young people. Uh, as an ex-smoker, I thought, hey, great idea, we can get off of cigarettes, whether it's Marlboro or otherwise, and I learned in the process of, of what we do as we investigate bills that the FDA does not have vaping as a smoking cessation device. What we're doing is basically just hooking our kids on nicotine. Uh, another th issue is we, we've got to improve the safety of the people of Hawaii. People are not secure to walk around in their neighborhoods like, hey, since when is Hawaii not able to uh, walk people to walk freely or to drive their cars or to have their house uh, burgled with, with, with uh, impunity. And these guys are organized. They've got getaway cars, they've got reconnaissance people, people who are scanning things out. And, and that, that's very dangerous. And le let me add one other thing and how we're different from all the things that you guys heard earlier. Uh, some of the issues about, well, we want to do a little bit more about this. We want to get the roads fixed, we want, you know, which is important. All those things about climate change are important. But until we grow our economy, people in this state are going to be leaving the state, not just because they can get a tax credit. They're going to be leaving the state because the needs of the people don't fit the size of the economy. To keep cutting the pie into different pieces and say, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna take care of you, that doesn't work. You gotta grow the pie, we gotta grow the economy. And nobody, generally speaking, in this building, except for a few guys in the Senate, really think about growing the economy. And that's one thing I'd like to see us concentrate on, getting the pie bigger. Let us become, for example, the Hollywood of the Pacific. We got a billion dollar industry, we're underperforming. We're not even pushing the envelope on that. I maybe went a little bit longer than you wanted on that, but there's a lot of things. There, wait, there's another variable I want to mention in 2019. 2019, of which we're going to hear on opening day, is a residual of the awakening of the Hawaiian community. The Hawaiian community is awakening, and we're going to be hearing the drum beats, but I think it's going to be hearing the heartbeats more of 125 years of crying out of a nation that was neglected and forgotten. So it's going to be a different spirit, and it's going to be a session I think people want us to deliver, and it is an election year, so everybody has got to be on their best, and I'm not sure that all this issue, this talk about uh, recreational marijuana, I, th I think that's foolishness. 
what, <laughs> the last thing we need is more malware in our computers. And basically marijuana to our youth is malware to their brains. And that's not gonna make us a better society. So I hope that that talk that was earlier by the majority doesn't actually turn into anything. That's my personal opinion. I think the opinion of a few other people. I wanted to touch on crime because I think that's something that I think a lot of folks in their neighborhoods are worried about. Like you said, you know, it's not the same Hawaii where you can, you know, leave your house unlocked or leave your car unlocked. And, and you had a town hall about this in your district. So what were, what were some of the, the outcomes of that and how do you, how does the minority plan to address crime? Going First, into I'm going to thank HPD for bringing nine officers, those assigned on the district and on their own dime, came and talked to the people of Waikai. We had a standing room only. People are very, very concerned. Uh, those of you on uh, nextdoor.com, keep staying tuned to what's going on so you're aware of what's uh, happening. Forewarned is forearmed. But basically, what is going on is a number of things that the government is responsible for and some of the things that people are responsible for. First, the government is 312 police officers short. How are you going to have a problem solved on crime if you don't have the officers to go out and patrol the community? There's got to be more incentives to recruit and to train and to beef up, if you will, our community policing. The second thing is, and this is it's no fault of the public, but I think this is something that will give them a better understanding. The police said half of the burglar uh, events in their homes was when the doors were open. You know, the, the old Hawaii has gone away. We can't leave our doors open anymore. Half of the cars that were stolen were with the keys in the car. We can't do that anymore, guys. It's, it's a new Hawaii. It's people out there who are preying on us and unfairly thinking that we're stupid, and we're not. But that's one of the things we gotta do. We gotta get the counties to get those police out there to help the people. Because if we're not protecting the safety and welfare of the people, what do we do? Why are we even in this building? 20 seconds, how do we address cost of living? Cost of living, we gotta grow the economy, we gotta make the pie bigger instead of cutting up into places. We gotta become the Hollywood of the Pacific, the space center of the Pacific, the sports center of the Pacific. We have got an untold amount of potential that we have not tapped yet. But we gotta think like, we gotta make business more friendly, we gotta get taxes and regulations to be nominal, and we've gotta be able to think entrepreneurially, not just bureaucratically. Representative Ward, thank you for joining us again on uh, the season three debut. And to the viewers at home, thank you for uh, joining us. We'll see you next week.